the end of the day. But uh, anyway, we've always been there in June. We've never been there in the, in the winter months. Hey, Hi everybody, Stu, AG6AG. Well, I have tried over the last maybe a oh, dozen videos to incorporate instructions involving identifying and using COM ports when talking to radios. I just finally realized that the only way to really get the point across is to go through and do a dedicated video about identifying, using, and configuring COM ports. So, with that, let's go ahead and get started. So, let's talk about serial ports. What do we use serial ports for? Many times uh, we'll use a serial port to connect to a radio or other electronics device to control it. Many times we'll use it to uh, access through a terminal program into a piece of network equipment. There's all sorts of uses that are still out there that are using serial ports. Um, unfortunately, computer manufacturers have figured out that, hey, the only thing we really need is we need USB ports, and then they can buy the adapters to do everything else. However, that does make serial ports rather complicated. They're much more complicated than they used to be. In the old days, you'd have a serial port built into your motherboard, and it would actually be identified uh, as a serial port in the device manager, and you pretty much knew that's COM1, that's COM2, or whatever, and that was a constant. Things have changed. So the first thing we need to do before we plug in a USB to serial adapter, before we turn around and attempt to uh, figure out what serial port is what, what we need to do is we need to look at the device manager in Windows to see what's there when nothing is plugged in. Now you're going to think that's crazy, right? Why do I care? Well, let me show you. By right hand, mouse, uh, right hand mouse clicking the start menu and clicking on device manager, I can pull up the device manager. In the device manager, I have ports, COM, and LPT. If I open this up, it's going to show me all the COM ports that are available on the system. Well, look at that. I have nothing plugged in, but I have a virtual COM3 that's tied into the Intel Active Management System. So if I selected COM3 as my radio COM port or as uh, what I'm going to use a terminal program to connect to or uh, what I'm using to connect to a TNC or something like that, uh, you know what? It's going to be wrong. So why is it there? Well. I'm going to give a brief explanation that the Intel Active Management System is there so um, your network administrators and hardware administrators in larger corporations can remotely manage different things within your computer. Now the reality of it is that uh, this is probably a home computer or a small business computer that you're dealing with if you're watching this video. Why is it there? Well, it was on the motherboard when you bought it, and it, uh, it's just something now that it's cheaper for them just to keep, it, keep the chip on the board than try to figure out how to remove it. So bottom line is, look at this before you plug in a serial device to your USB connector. Now, I am going to now plug in, with this open, I am now going to plug in a serial to USB adapter in the USB port. And what's going to happen is it's going to identify the adapter. There it is. And this happens to be a prolific uh, chipset. There are several counterfeit prolific uh, chipsets out there. Buyer beware. There are other chipsets that you can buy. Uh, I'm fine with the prolific. Some people really, you know, kind of look down their nose on it. But I use it for everything and really don't have much trouble with it. Anyway, with all that said, I now have a COM port that I can deal with on COM4. And I now know what COM port this device is. Same thing if you're plugging in a USB uh, into your... Um, 
laptop that goes to your radio or into your computer that goes to your radio. What's going to happen? Well, hopefully it's going to identify as COM ports. If it doesn't, okay, if you don't magically see a bunch of COM ports pop up in there, or at least one when you plug in that radio, you probably need to go to the radio manufacturer's website and download the driver. All right, well, through the magic of editing, I've gone ahead and opened up my device manager on my actual Shack PC. Now you'll notice that I have three different COM ports in here. This USB serial port on COM3, that is the COM port that I use to communicate with my TNC. These two Silicon Lab ports, COM4 and COM5, go to my FTDX 3000. Now, when you're turning stuff off and turning stuff on, and sometimes you're doing updates, and sometimes these things will change. So you kind of need to keep track of what's what. Now, I'm going to go ahead and flip on another radio. This is a Yaesu 991. What you're going to see is, magically, I now have a COM6 and a COM7. So, you can see how this can get a bit confusing. Anyway, once you figure out, though, what ports are being used for your radio or for your device, your TNC, or your modem, believe it or not, people still use modems, uh, or if you're doing a serial no modem between two computers, uh, believe it or not, people still do stuff like that, too. Um, this should help you figure out what COM port to set it to. Anyway... The only other thing I think I'd like to show you regarding that, I'm going to open up a program called PuTTY. And I know that this configuration is a little hard to see. So, through the magic of editing, I'll just make it bigger. So, some things you have to understand about serial communication. Uh, by the way, I use PuTTY for this because it has a lot of little bells and whistles that I can use as examples. But let's take a look at the serial settings in PuTTY. And you've probably seen these settings before. Basically, you have up here at the top, COM1, which is the serial port this is currently set to. I'm going to change it to COM3. Under there, I have the speed or baud rate, and that's the number of bits per second that get tr transferred between the two devices. It can be anything, okay, but typically it starts at something around 300, goes to 600, 1200, um, 4800, 9600, and on and on and on, all the way up to 115, 200. Um, 115-200 is lickety-split, but you tend to get a few more errors just because of the limitation of the chips that we're dealing with. Now, uh, I like 38-4, but in my particular case, because of the chip that's in my TNC, I don't want to go over 9600. And if I remember correctly, the actual default for it, I had to actually change it to 9600 in the firmware, but the actual default, I think, was like 1200. So uh, anyway, your mileage may vary. You can set this to whatever you want. You just need to make sure it is the same on the device as well as the program accessing it. 9600 on here means that the device has to be set for 9600. Data bits. So that's the number of actual bits that are data. The way that the actual bundle works that goes down the wire is you have a start bit, you have your data bits, then you have a parity bit if you're using it, and then a number of stop bits, which could be one or two. In our particular case, we're going to have eight bits with one stop bit and no parity. So what that basically means is there are nine 10 bits total in each block because I have my start bit, my eight data bits, and my stop bit. If I had parity turned on, I would have basically a start bit, eight data bits, a parity bit, 
either either even or odd, and a stop bit or two. Typically, um, radios and most devices are set up by default for 9600, 8, 1, and none. But flow control is an important subject, too. Exxon X-Off is a software-level flow control, and all flow control is is it doesn't allow it to run away, okay? Flow control allows for system checks that control what's going on. In most cases, if you're dealing with hardware devices, RTS, CTS, let's say you're using a null modem or something like that, is usually the proper thing to have on both sides. Now, there are cases okay, where you want software um, flow control, and that is usually when you're using an actual modem. Um, if uh, you remember modems, then you're in my group anyway. With that, with these particular settings, I now should be able to go back to my uh, session here, select Serial, and all those settings should be stored. So, I'm going to go ahead and click OK on this, and let's see if I get a console. And i got to drag it over from the other window, but there it is. And you know what? Let's see if I can make that bigger. All right, well, through the magic of editing, I was able to do it. So I'm just going to hit a return here, and look at that. I now have my command prompt from my TNC. So... Basically, this is like the old days when you used to be on a console talking to like a, a TTY or whatever. Um, we can even experiment a little bit and type in a command and see if we can actually connect with my TNC. And let's see what happens. Look at that. I'm connected. There we go. So I can go ahead and do a list and look at all the messages. Let's see if there's any there. No. So that's basically a serial session. That's exactly what it is. It's not any more complicated than that. So let's talk a little bit about your radio. All right. Let's do the last piece of the puzzle here. I'm going to show you my Yesu menu settings. Now, Depending on what you're setting up and what your radio is, you may or may not have these settings. You may or may not have choices on what you can set for these things. You need to read your radio manual. And based on what you read out of the radio manual, you have to verify the settings on the radio if you can or use the default settings that are programmed into the radio. But always verify your radio settings. Let's go ahead and scroll down here. I'm just going to scroll down until I get to my cat section. And there we go. I've got cat select. I have two choices. I have RS-232 or USB. I happen on the uh, FTDX-3000 to have a uh, regular old RS-232 uh, 9-pin port that I can use for cat control or RIDI. I also have USB that I can use for cat control. Here I select USB because that's what I'm using is the USB adapter that emulates the COM port inside the radio. My cat rate, like I said before, I tend to run faster, 38400. The default on this was 4800 baud. And as far as my cat uh, uh, RTS, I have mine disabled. You will most likely want yours enabled. The reason that mine is disabled is because I needed to have it disabled for one of the software packages that I connect to with this. So, so it is. Anyway, and that's it. I mean, there's not much else I can try to show you here. Um, the rest of it's, well, the rest of it's in pretty much the setup programs that I've done in other videos. Uh, but I hope this helps you in uh, figuring out how to work out that COM port. It seems like for most of my buddies out there, that's the hardest thing that they go through, is getting that COM port isolated and figuring out what the settings are. Anyway, 
Thank you so much for joining me on this video. Um, and I hope it was informative. These are real tough subjects, it seems like, to a lot of folks out there that don't deal much in data. So it's important that I get these out, and I know that. Please, if you liked it, if you think I should have done more, if you think I did too much, go ahead and comment down below. Oh, and be sure to subscribe so you get emailed on the, uh, uh, the new uh, videos as they come out. Anyway, this is Stu, AG6AG, bidding you 73. And thank you so much for joining me today. Hope to catch you on the air.